Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we have the Feast of St. Jean Francis uh, de Chantel. Uh, she uh, was quite remarkable from a very poor youth. She wanted to love God and to uh, please God. God works with the saints. Those that want to love them, he helps them more and advances them. Because uh, one saint is worth uh, more than uh, uh, a hundred or a thousand mediocre uh, Catholics uh, for, for God. And that's why he, uh, the ones that are holy, uh, he makes them holier and he works with them and they love him more and they get more graces and more blessings. And uh, this is what happened to uh, St. Jane Francis. So, so she, uh, when she was already very young, uh, she knew her catechism well. She, uh, like uh, some of the other saints, like St. Saint Dominic Savio, uh, she didn't want to offend God. He didn't want to offend God when he was very young, more later than St. Jane. And uh, she uh, happened to be the Calvinist uh, heresy was uh, rampant and raging in France at that time. And uh, she met this uh, Calvinist when she was five, and she refuted him. She, she already knew the catechism, and she could answer his error to say that he was wrong. And then he gave her a gift. And she took that gift and immediately threw it in the fire. So that's what happens to heretics. Uh, they go and do the fire. And she's only a five-year-old girl. And so uh, she wanted to impress on him uh, that uh, he would have to uh, convert. And later, of course, she, she married. She married the Baron de Chantal. She was not from a, uh, a poor family, so minor, minor royalty or minor aristocracy or something. And she married the Baron de Chantal and had a family, of course. And, uh, uh, he was accidentally uh, killed in a hunting accident with his friends. One of his friends uh, shot him by mistake and killed him. So it was a little reckless, perhaps, on that man's part, but uh, he was killed. And uh, she took a vow not to marry again. Of course, uh, she was still young, a young widow, and many people wanted to marry her. Uh, but uh, she had said, no, I'm going to uh, not marry again. No, I'll marry once, and that's enough. And then she uh, eventually, St. Francis, uh, the sales got her started in the, to become a nun. And, uh, there was opposition to her becoming a nun. She was already doing much for the poor, taking care of doing a lot of charity and uh, teaching uh, catechism to many people. And uh, so her son, uh, her son didn't want her going, and she had to literally step over him. He laid down at the door and said, "No, you're not going to the to the convent, mother." And so uh, she stepped over him and went, and she started the visitation. Uh, sisters of the New Order, uh, based on uh, gentleness, let's say, a simple, simple rule, not difficult, uh, so that uh, many, many women could, could follow uh, uh, the rule of the Visitation Sisters and, and become holy uh, following that rule. We saw the other day St. Bernard, now, his rule was a rule of austerity. He had to bring back all his austerity into the continent of the monastery, and the disciplines of the fasting, and then taking the discipline, and all these other uh, offenses and, and things like this. That's what he did in his monastery, but uh, the uh, religious house of St. James wasn't like that. It was a, a gentle rule where it was simple to follow, and uh, it made allowances for people who were weak, and uh, uh, people who more sweet probably and this and that and they were many allowances under the rule of St. Francis but his motivation was a charity to love God. Uh, we saw the other day St. John Eudas already brought in devotion to the Sacred Heart. Well, devotion to the Sacred Heart uh, was also in the Visitation Convent. That's where St. Margaret Mary uh, came from and uh, uh, St. Jean uh, loved our Lord very much. And, uh, she got older, she kept repeating to her, her, her sisters, because she had already started many convents, by many, branch, uh, many branches, uh, many other houses had been formed because there were other vocations. And she repeated to her sisters always, to love the Lord God with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul, and all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. That's, that's the command we have to follow. We have to have this charity and this love. She raised the great heights of charity. And uh, became very holy, and many, many miracles that worked through her intercession. And uh, she sets the example uh, for people, really, uh, for women in all walks of life. She was a child, and then she was a wife, and a mother, and, and also uh, a nun. So she did all these things, and uh, she did them 
all well. Uh, I'm sure her children were holy, and uh, she raised a holy family. It's understandable her son didn't want her to leave. That's not that's normal. I don't know how, we don't know how old he was at that time. I don't know how old he was at that time anyway. But uh, he didn't want her to go. And uh, that's uh, a pretty normal uh, thing. But she said, no, this is the will of God. And I, and I go. St. Francis was backing her. And so she did go. And uh, she became the holy nun, the founders of a religious order. So we want to ask her, and we we'll pray to her today, we want to ask her if we might learn charity. Because that's what she taught, by her example, by her words, how to love one another, how to love God above all. We love God above all things, and we don't want to fall into any errors, any heresies, or any uh, 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 lack anything in shorting, shortcomings. We love God. 